thank you for staying with uh, us on TVC Breakfast. So going by recent developments, the Nigerian economy is struggling to stabilize and the impact is being felt in different sectors of the economy. For some rising inflation figures, which is a result of rising cost of goods and services as well as pump petrol price are some of um, you know, the indices. And due to this, some Nigerians, including the National Association of Nigerian Students, as well as the APC's Northern Youth Vanguard, have charged President Bola Tinobu to consider a review and restructuring of World Bank loans and grants from donor agencies, these four ministries, departments, and agencies. Well, for them, the restructuring will help ensure that the loans and grants are used for projects with visible impact and cut down on wastage or resources which the country needs at this time. And they say uh, in the past money secured from donor agencies for capital projects financing have witnessed poor execution. And uh, so that's why <clears throat> they're appealing to the president uh, to make or to set up an independence committee to restructure all World Bank loans and make it mandatory for these MDAs to use these funds to boost the economy for uh, the direct benefit of the Nigerian people. That's what we'll be talking about in uh, the next couple of minutes. Joining us from our Abuja studio is public affairs analyst Ibrahim Garba. Thanks a lot uh, for joining us on the program this morning. So what are your thoughts on the need to restructure this um, uh, loans and grants, especially awarded to the MDAs. So tell us your assessment of the situation so far and how much you agree uh, with um, you know, this stance of concerned Nigerians. Oh, well, thank you very much, uh, Kenny and Teofilas, for having me on your program this morning. Uh, let me start by saying that, uh, or saying, Happy New Year to you, both of you and all Nigerians. Thank from this you very much. Happy New Year um, to you. you <laughs> well, you have uh, actually captured the essence of uh, this conversation this morning. Um, it is not, uh, it is a fact that uh, we are battling to survive, you know, after some years. And um, if uh, at this point in time, 63 years down the line, uh, we are still begging to survive, requesting for loans, and uh, support from other nations, especially through the World Bank. And it calls to mind the need for us to review and at the same time sit down to ask questions. What really have uh, gone wrong? And one of those things that we found out was um, most of these facilities, rather the World Bank loans and grants coming to Nigerians, basically they are meant for uh, advocacy, meetings and um, consultancy services. And we found out also these monies are not well spent. Some of them are kept somewhere and you cannot access them. In, in fact, when you are, or rather when you are requesting for loan or grant, you should be specific how you intend to spend the money and it comes with terms and conditions. But then it is the bonus is on us to devise ways and means we can spend this money because with, you, know, you and I understand that um, the economy is in bad shape. We need uh, the inflation rate is very, very high, and we need to, you know, give out money for people to invest in businesses and all that. But we thank God for the faith Nigerians have in this economy that um, as of last week Friday, we had it at the Nigerian Stock Exchange recording so much gain. Uh, between 8 months, 69 percent. So we see the stock exchange market rising. But then we need to look at other wide areas. And that is why we are calling and appealing to Mr. President. You know, Section 130 of the 1999 Constitution empower him to act on behalf of Nigerians as a CNC. This money is available. We have secured this loan. These grants are there. But there's a need for him to sit down, set up a committee to review some of these loans. We need to restructure these loans. I use this word restructure because uh, there's an urgent need for us to plan for execution. 
Otherwise, this money will still be domiciled. This money will still not be available for the MDAs to you know, have access to it. But at the same time, you find that some of these monies you know, are not properly utilized the way it is meant for. And um, there is a need for urgent review. And that is why we say, okay, raising our voices at the local level, calling on Mr. President to please address these issues. And the most important thing for him to do now is setting up a committee that will even comprise of the NFIU, EFCC, ICPC, and other qualified Nigerians to look at it critically. How can we implement these loans and how can we spend this money so that we can you know, take people out of poverty? The money is idea. Nigeria is a great nation, but then we need to look at this basic issues because poverty is endemic, it's affecting our people, it's affecting productivity, and it is time for him to act now. That is why people are raising their voices, and I join in calling and appealing on Mr. President to please look at this issue because it's very, very critical so that MDAs can be more active than before. Okay, so looking at your last statement, President should look at these issues, but they have been concerns, and even if you look at this issue critically, um, many have opined that um, despite the fact that the Nigerian economy is stabilizing uh, and the fact that the impact is still felt in different sectors of the economy, uh, such as rising inflation amongst others, there seems to be this belief that if the loans are restructured, then it will ensure that this goes directly to handling projects. But, like you've mentioned, mm. utilization and implementation of um, this restructuring, if, 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 if it happens. And that is a great, uh, a great concern here. Now, how does this put us on... What does this, how does this project our image? How does this put our image out there in the minds and in the, in the eyes of the international community, especially when we go cap in hand to uh, ask for these loans and grants? Well, it's an unfortunate situation, like I told you. If at this point in our national life we continue to seek for loans, we continue to beg you know, nations for support and all that, well, um, most of these things or these loans, they usually come with terms and conditions. But by the time uh, Mr. President sit down to look at this, there's a need for him to study. What are the intent? What is it meant for? And uh, if I take you back to the COVID-19 period, when this uh, Ministry of uh, Humanitarian Affairs, you know, was set up, you know, a lot of money was appropriated, monies were spent. Between that time and 2023, almost 1.5 trillion was, uh, was disposed to that particular uh, ministry. And you find that it's not impactful Nigerians are not feeling the impact, and it is time for us to look at this thing critically. What can we do within the present time to take Nigerians out of this, uh, this situation we find ourselves? The only way we can tackle this problem is by supporting and rather appealing to Mr. President, sit down again, look at this, have a meeting with the uh, the ministries, departments, and agencies of government, key sectors of the economy that we believe that needs immediate attention. Monies are available. Spending this money is always difficult. And that is why you find out in a budget cycle, you find out on almost 25% of this uh, budget allocated to these ministries are spent. Majority are left idle. But whereas these loans are restructured, these monies will be available and um, the MDAs will now have the opportunity to sit down and say, okay, what are the critical sectors of the economy begging for attention? We need to develop infrastructure. We need to you know, set up PHCs at the world level, at least within the 774 local governments we have in the country. We need to empower women at the local level we need to take bold steps towards, you know, improving on our economy. But to do that, to achieve that, we need money. And these monies are available. But if you cannot access it, how can the NDAs implement it? Whereas I told you in the past, most of these monies are spent on meetings, advocacy, 
and their consultancy services. This money does not go down to the areas in need. We have taken practical steps in the past through Empower Program. You know, cash money, rather trader money, cash money transfer and all that. Cash but transfer. has it really been impactful? So these are some of the questions we are asking. And that is why I was okay. right now, if uh, these loans, or rather if these committees are being set up, they will not advise Mr. President, it's okay. This is, or rather, these are the immediate challenges and these are the steps that need to be taken so that uh, Nigerians can feel the impact of governance. But for now, we are still crawling, we are still, you know, battling to survive. And, uh, you know, talking about, um, you know, some of these interventions by way of grants and loans, we understand uh, that, of course, the concessions given to Nigeria are, it's more like soft loans, uh, so to speak. There is a considerable number of time uh, before the time when you now have to start sending in installmental payments. And some of these projects are also for poverty alleviation, but as you have said, um, it, it, the results are usually not palatable, not within the expectations or the reason why these loans, loans and grants were given. Uh, so people have spoken about the role of um, civil society. What are your thoughts on how um, they can like, be a game changer in this um, you know, desire that um, these monies are well spent? Oh, thank you very much, uh, Kemi. You have rightly captured, you know, what I was thinking earlier on, that uh, there's a need for positive engagement with the, those in the private sector and those in the civil society organizations. Uh, these are, you know, these are organizations that have the real statistics, they have the data on the current state of the economy, you know. And uh, you cannot work in isolation uh, 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 we, uh, we cannot work in isolation with these people. You must bring them on board. They are very, very active, and they know where it hurts most. And that's why, like I always say, there's a need for, for us to look at these critical areas. But you cannot get this result without inviting and involving the critical stakeholders, like you mentioned, the civil society uh, organizations, even those in the private sector. Because we are talking about poverty that is endemic. We are talking about a situation whereby you know, people are beginning to wonder, are we really uh, moving forward? Yes, there are some areas where, where we are seeing elements of progress. But then there is a need for us to cushion the effect, especially in areas of uh, healthcare services, infrastructure, you know, education. These areas require immediate attention. But whereas these funds are, are, are not available or not channeled to all these areas, there is still going to be pressure on the economy and they were, we're still going to experience you know, deficiency in some of these areas. And that is why we are still raising our voices, calling on people all concerned, especially members of the National Assembly, let them look at these issues critically. The bonus are available. We cannot, we, need to, we cannot continue to depend on loan. Going at those days, that people give you loan, like uh, the, the, the Minister of Finance, Wale Edo, pointed out in one of his statement press conferences when he was talking to Nigerians. He mentioned the fact that almost 98% of our current budget, you know, is in deficit. So we need to borrow to finance this, uh, this, this, this uh, budget, you know. 2.9 billion dollars from the World Bank, 80 million dollars from African Development Bank, and we still have to service other loans which are, 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 are begging for attention. So the earlier Mr. President sit down to look at these issues, the better. But again, I have faith in him. This is somebody that is one time an accountant, somebody a businessman and a politician. But you know, the difference is that um, we have somebody who is an idealist, somebody that is ready to make things work for Nigerians. All we need to do as Nigerians to rise up and support these initiatives, add our voices to it, so that this opportunity we have now having him at the helm of our face we will benefit greatly because I see him with a vision. He wants to turn things around for, for Nigerians. But then you are now have a role to play 
to support him to achieve that and take us to the, to the promised land. All right. Ibrahim Garaba, public policy analyst, we thank you very much for speaking with us on TVC Breakfast.